are you here, Professor? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me? I already shared my screen. Yes, we can hear you and we can see your screen. So we get the agreement and consent of other uh, uh, speakers, other panelists. We know that your class is also the important class that you cannot miss. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. I think you can see my slides in full screen mode. Yes, we can. Okay, let me make some adjustments. I don't know if something is not working over here, but I think I will be able to sort it out. Okay, it's done. Let me start. Assalamu alaikum. I also start my chronometer. I hope I will be able to keep loyal and stick to my time. Let me so distinguished commander the president of Assam and distinguished team members. I would like to extend my best cigars very quickly and start with my presentation right away. As you can see, the title of my presentation is the Internal Security Organization in the Ottoman State and some recommendations for today. In fact, apart from the police and gendarmerie, uh, I'm going to talk about other units because the police and gendarmerie are all of the units. The law enforcement units that we have but i will be talking about some originally unique security units of the ottoman so i'll be talking about some unique uh, security organization practices in uh, the ottoman uh, uh, state then we are going to make some inferences for uh, today's world and then i will complete and conclude my presentation as you know the ottoman state uh, uh, was uh, there and existed for uh, 620 three years and it had a surface area of 5.2 million square meters square kilometers in fact it was a long chain of centuries a very wide surface area it means that it had many different uh, administrative and uh, security practices in different uh, countries and subunits and it set many different examples just like darabant matrolos menzilikesh or the uh, countryside border units. I will be talking about these different units. Internal security has always been a trouble for all the states, and you cannot exclude those Ottoman state from this role. So the internal policies, their functioning was different in Istanbul, the capital, and in the other cities of this empire. So there is the classic period, and there is also the post-classic period uh, for the security uh, issues in the Ottoman. As you know, in the US, uh, there is a separate department for the internal security, but here in Turkey, we don't have it. Maybe because of the absence of this department or ministry, in fact, there is, there is this uh, um, uh, the absence of such a unit handling with uh, these topics. Uh, that maybe that is why we have been dealing with the uh, uh, PYD, YPG, and other similar uh, uh, terrorist organizations. In fact, in time we were able to uh, 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 handle the, these issues, but there have been many serious problems in the community. I don't know what will come next. Nobody knows what will come next, but there is something significant here. That is, there is this continuous internal security threat in uh, our state. And all other Islamic states have to be uh, agile and vigilant in the face of the internal security threats. Security is always the most important matter because uh, in the hierarchy, first there are the physiological needs of the people and then the security need comes. So uh, uh, after this introduction, I'll be talking about internal security, the internal security practices in the Ottoman, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the reformation period, you know, pre and post reformation period, because it's an important turning point in the Ottoman Empire. And then I'll be talking about some unique practices of the Ottoman in ensuring internal security. There are um, various practices that I will be talking about. In fact, in uh, the uh, establishment uh, of internal security, some systematic and hierarchical uh, uh, practices of the Ottoman can be seen. And in fact, they, all these uh, have been successful for a long time. Uh, the Janissaries were the first of their kind. Asakiri, uh, Asakiri Mansuri Muhammadiyye, 
army. In fact, the Janissaries have been a strong and powerful army for the Ottoman. Uh, during the early years of the Ottoman and during the rise of the empire, they used some different systems. And these systems, in fact, uh, uh, dated back from the Karahan, Selchuk, Ghaznas. For example, there was a Subashi that was an important organization, an important institution. And uh, 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 in the past, the Subashis used to be responsible for the municipal policing. And then Sanjak Bey and Kadi and Subashi, the three actors were appointed to the newly conquered areas and they were in uh, original dealing with the public order as well but later on uh, when the all uh, a military organization expanded the Ottoman Empire with the implementation of the new security policies so she's um, lost their importance there were some novelties uh, for the modernization of the Ottoman Empire and in the modern uh, ages in the rural areas you would fire subashes but also you would fight the public order uh, 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 security officials as well especially after the reformation and reorganization period there were more efforts in order to have these multiple structures Kavas is an important and another organization in the past, they didn't. Uh, they they had different names. So one name was Sergeant, and with the Janissaries, uh, 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 they started to exist. And according to the historian, Sildar and Bayezid was the uh, Sultan who established this organization. Uh, the uh, uh, Hafiye, uh, uh, the uh, uh, inspectors organization, is another. Uh, uh, organization uh, that uh, uh, was responsible in order to follow the uh, covered policing works. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, some male and female officers were there in the inspectors organization and uh, they were chosen uh, uh, according to certain qualifications and requirements. They were mostly in charge of uh, uh, detaining and arresting the thieves. And uh, in fact, some uh, 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 pickpocketers uh, 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 and also some individuals with criminal records would be used as informants by this organization. So much of other uh, was, was another uh, officer. They would be mostly on the covered. Uh, uh, there would be a certain reporting chain, and uh, according to the uh, crimes, there would be different penalties. But the penalties would be mostly physical. For example, they would cut the ears. And in Turkish, we have a proverb: so uh, if someone is seen to be very old and very expert in some language, we said that okay, his ear was cut in the past. That is how the proverb originates. Tahari is another uh, public uh, servant. Uh, they were uh, in the service of the uh, governors. Uh, uh, they were also working uh, uh, in the bazaars and markets. They were just checking the honest trading practices of the uh, uh, traders. Direct municipal policing was helped by many different units, and one unit was the night watchers, uh, night guards, Ases and Pasban were the two names. Ases uh, originated from the Janissary and Pasban were reported to the Subashir and Shakir was a third one and they were uh, reporting to the Ottoman palace. The Viziz in the state men were also protected and guarded by these people and uh, when they were assigned to uh, the emperor's office in fact they were also uh, acting as a messenger they had their uh, own teams and squads there uh, were also in relation with the supervisors of different units 
Internal security organizations in the Ottoman was um, based on establishing the new units rather than rehabilitating the existing units. That was a trend until Selim III. As you know, uh, there came the Nizam Jedid. Uh, after the fall of Selim II, the Nizam Jedid just collapsed and uh, was um, scattered uh, uh, and abolished. It, it took a very short uh, time of effect. And then Asakir Mansuri Muhammad the new army was established with Mahmoud II, uh, uh, and then came uh, the uh, Tanzimat Ferman uh, uh, in 1839. That was the declaration of reformation. It started a new era, and a gendarmerie organization for the first time uh, was founded. In fact, the necessary grants were laid for the first time uh, with the reformation. Uh, its rise uh, 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 was in uh, Europe first, and then it discovered concert was important to um, the Ottoman. In 1869, Asakiri, the Gendarmerie Organization Law was issued in 1845. The police organization was established. Had a multi-partite organization. I'm sorry, sometimes my slides seem to be stuck. Let's look at the modernization efforts in the Ottoman era. And as I was just talking about, and as I was just summarizing, there were different stages, uh, establishment of Asaki Rizabdiya, Vakaya, Hayriya, uh, incident and abolishment of the Janissaries. But now I'd like to talk about some unique practices of internal security in the Ottoman. Let me start with the Redif organization. These are different uh, unions. Mahmoud II uh, established this in 1834 for internal security in the rural parts of the country. In fact, this is not directly responsible to ensure security. However, these uh, are the units under the army, and uh, they were functioning the security role of the army in the countryside because Redif uh, uh, soldiers were uh, would be randomly chosen from among the people. They would serve five years in the army, uh, and then they, they acted as a spare army, a reserve army during the peace. They were responsible uh, for protecting the uh, country, the territory, and the people. Bashi Bozuk is uh, a group of people. In fact, starting with the uh, pre-reformation, uh, 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 These groups uh, started to appear because, you know, apart from the Red Reserve Army, uh, the uh, uh, Empire wanted to make use of the uh, civil people. And at different times of the year, their services would be used by the uh, uh, state. And uh, unfortunately, later on, that turned into something different because, you know, the, the Bashi Bozuk uh, groups, the random groups uh, uh, were uh, recruited from among the people randomly and they turned out to be a problem for the state. These were irregular forces in the militia and uh, they started uh, to uh, impose levies on the public randomly. Kursandar uh, is a name uh, and it means uh, uh, the countryside watchman uh, uh, and uh, in fact you can see the uh, pictures of these soldiers uh, uh, in fact they were a, a counter force uh, uh, against the irregular uh, uh, militia or the uh, uh, terrorists uh, on the mountains you know uh, that uh, is guerrilla and the counter guerrilla uh, uh, equation so uh, uh, for some time they used the bashibos groups in order to chase uh, the uh, uh, guerrillas but then you know bashibos groups turned out to be a problem then ultimate state wanted to try different methods in the western Anatolia uh, 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 bashibos groups were called zaybek you know this 
word in uh, Turkish. These are the people mostly living on the mountainous areas, and these are paid soldiers uh, that are uh, uh, responsible for protection uh, and guarding until the fall of uh, Ottoman. They happen to be the main character in many positive and negative incidents. So the transition from uh, the guerrilla to the uh, countryside watchman happened with the uh, pearl coming from the state. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, 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 those were allowed by the state to act as watchmen in the mountainous areas of the country. The guards and rangers, uh, these are mostly old Janissaries. They didn't retire, uh, but they, they would be used for different functions. Uh, uh, today we have rangers, but the, those rangers and our rangers, uh, in fact, uh, uh, play different functions. Martolos. Martolos uh, first started to be used as a spy, uh, but you know, there were different. Uh, 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 functions and connotations added to this world, and these include uh, uh, so the messengers uh, uh, or a ship captain, but their main function was always spying and uh, 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 messengering, and mostly they were Christian soldiers. Later on, some Turkish soldiers were found to be uh, functioning as martyrs as well. In addition to the security roles, they were also checking the uh, 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 roads. Uh, uh, I know all these topics are very long, but I, I cannot go on talking about them in an elaborated manner because of my time limits. Now, I'd like to talk about that events before I conclude. That band uh, uh, is uh, road crossing point security organization. They also work for a maintenance of the roads, repair of the roads. And if there is a very dissolved area, they also uh, make those areas uh, 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 inhabited. Uh, in fact, is they also had the role of ensuring settlement in abandoned land. Probably the, they first emerged during Mehmet II uh, and uh, the uh, military and uh, commercial roles in the Ottoman were secured by these people, their bands. Uh, this is just one class. In fact, there were many other classes. There were also the bridge guards. They were uh, playing their functions, and in fact, they would take their sh uh, share or remuneration through exemption of certain taxes. In, in the 16th century, mostly, uh, there were different phenomena in the Anatolia, and in fact, the, uh, these Darbanes had to leave their villages and the settlements because of these incidents. They were acting as the gendarmerie. They were uh, trying to protect the passageways, crossing points, the roads, and they were helping with the uh, maintenance and repair of the roads. And uh, in fact, they were also helping with the communication and transportation. Uh, this organization collapsed because uh, they won to uh, their share from the tax, in addition to the exemption. Menzil Kesh is a different organization. They, they would be villagers. And in fact, they, those are the people who are assigned from the local villages and they would be uh, 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 paid by uh, the uh, families and in fact their uh, services would be paid through exemption from certain taxes conclusion part in order to ensure internal and external security each state uh, assigns uh, some functions and uh, they have their own organizations in fact internally the violence terrorism came to threats and there came some external threats for any state and after all these exposures the security policies are shaped accordingly this is also a reality and truth for turkey when turkey is ensuring its internal and external security in addition to the historical uh, knowledge coming from the ottoman the current socioeconomic conditions are also taken into consideration by the turkish state when it was building its own security 
security policy. So uh, uh, Ottoman state, in fact, set example for many other states. And in Turkey, for the Republic of Turkey, it also set an example in the ensuring of internal security in terms of the security policies. And we will... Uh, keep benefiting from this example in time according to the conditions of the time of course these policies uh, 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 may uh, shift uh, paradigms because of the conjuncture uh, so uh, 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 for example in istanbul in different provinces of the ottoman uh, uh, in fact we see some strong security organization the security was ensured but then you know the territory was very vast i think 74 75 states uh, uh, were just founded in in the previously uh, Ottoman land. You said uh, that is a great diversity of nationalities and the Ottomans had to administer all these nationalities. So it has to be admired, you know, how long they were able to administer such a great variety of nationalities and they kept uh, in power, they remained in power for a long number of years. It is admirable. Marcos, the country uh, uh, site watchman ranges uh, I was talking about different organizations and uh, you know sometimes they uh, uh, employed retired soldiers that employment of retired soldiers recruitment of retired soldiers or, or could be an example for the uh, Turkish Republic and uh, uh, however during the fall of the Ottoman Empire, we see there were reformation efforts. Uh, uh, the Ottomans uh, tried to withstand the effects of time, but they were successful, successful only to a certain extent. Internal security organizations, uh, uh, in fact, were strong in the Ottoman, and that was what helped Ottoman to uh, uh, reign for such a long uh, series of years. Yes, thank you very much. I think I exceeded my time by five minutes, but I'm sorry, Mr. Chair and distinguished panelists. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> well, thank you very much, <laughs> Professor Genghis. I was also uh, keeping an eye on the clock. Yes, you exceeded your time by five minutes, but it was flowing very fluently. I don't want to intervene. Well, uh, thank you very much for your uh, speech about the internal security organizations in the Ottoman. There were different names, there were different types of organizations, but in each period, of the uh, state, you know, uh, uh, there were problems. This is the case for all the states. You know uh, uh, what the Japanese scholar uh, says. It, it, in fact, the uh, black stones can be seen by everyone, but it's important to uh, 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 see the white stones or, or the same analogy can be made with hair, you know, uh, uh, dark hair can be seen by everyone. What, what about the uh, uh, white hair? This is internal security. Now, I would like to proceed with the second speaker, Ahmed Özdal, uh, Associate Professor. He will be talking about the public order problems in, in the medieval Islamic cities and some measures for security. Please be careful with time. I extend my basicas to everyone. Uh, do you hear me properly? Yeah, we can hear you very well. Please go on. Thank you very much. I will talk about the uh, public order problems in the medieval Islamic cities, and I'll be talking about some security measures taken then. That will be the topic of my presentation. First, let me provide you some introduction and set the uh, perspective for uh, the uh, public order problems. You know, uh, external uh, threats uh, 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 can be originating from human factors, just like looting and invasion, but there may be some natural disasters uh, 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 acting as a factor, for example, uh, a flood, aridity, etc. And in the town centers, there can be some overall chaos or independent of all this, there can be other public order problems. These are all the factors affecting the people and uh, the community may lose their culture of coexistence and uh, their uh, security and, uh, in terms of 